Hello, I'm here today in the studio um, of acclaimed artist Frank Bowling. His work is pioneering, creative, and ultimately we're doing a reappraisal of his career. The Irish Museum of Modern Art is really proud to support this short film and Frank Bowling's work. This exhibition was curated by Okwion Wieser at Haus de Kunst and tours to Sharjah Art Foundation and fits snugly within Immer's kind of role of how we support the artist from Clemente, Francesco Clemente, to Atal Aden, to many artists that are claiming their space in the 21st century and the history of art. This exhibition by Frank Bowling really takes us on a journey as Bowling works really looks at the notion of scale, colour, the depth of colour and techniques of materiality. Ultimately, through politics and personal kind of issues that he brings up, we're actually taken and transcended to the monumental. So what do you think it means today, being an artist? What are your values? You know, I came upon um, wanting to be an artist um, after I tried and belonged to be a poet and writer. And um, when, at the age of 90, I, I, <coughs> I arrived in London. I had no um, in, no hint or inclination that there was such a, an urgent part of life as art and culture, you know. It gradually, uh, the writing thing became less and less, um, less and less a pull and um, trying to make paintings dominated my life. You know, I just couldn't stop trying to make self-portrait or whatever else, compositions of, um, you know, uh, lonely men sitting over their, their drinks in pubs and stuff. And then I was advised to go to the art school. It ran then, and um, I... Uh, uh, chose Chelsea because that was in the neighbourhood and that's how it's all started. Really. You have several connections with friends in Ireland. Can you let us know how these came about and, and how they evolved? By sort of um, identif ident identifying with the Irish, their ways and, and um, the warmth and pull that this these people had, and, you know, uh, yes, that's a, it was a great strength to me. And did you spend any time in Ireland at all? I did go to Ireland. I went to Dublin because my great friend Tony White had gone off to um, look after lobster pots, lobster pots in the west of Ireland, and I thought that I would be sort of uh, safe long as Tony was around, but um, I didn't get to the West. I stopped in Dublin and got involved with uh, Pierce Hutchison and um, the people who, the poets and, and the journalists who were around the Irish Times. It was the, the habit of those uh, writers and um, journalists um, of um, being in the pub as soon as it opened. And then we'd have to get out or sit indoors or put, or during the holy hour. Uh, so we sat in McDade's uh, pub for eight hours or something like that, just gassing and drinking. And then, uh, if you can spend all your time in the pub, it's very hard to know how much work you can do during that time. So, um, <laughs> uh, and since I was so keen on. Um, um, trying to do some work, um, every single chance I could get. Um, I was often, uh, after the whole year, um, out trying to do, you know, the sketches and the kind of re regency, um, I don't know what you call it, not an play because it's a big place in Bald Bridge. You know, the, the regency architecture that there, but, Fascinated me, so the, the, the structure of the buildings. 
Twelve pages of stuff, please. And I felt hooked on, on the feel of the place, you know. The rag trees, for instance, I found that such a, uh, um, a, 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 a deep notion that you can hang your troubles on a tree, you know, so, so this wonderful thing of um, finding a way to get rid of your pain by hanging it on a tree. It seems like the kind of thing that people in Guyana would have done, you know, and I found um, the way uh, the Irish proceeded, uh, very s sympathetic. You know, I felt um, buoyed by you know, the friendship that the Irish um, sort of afforded me, if you like. You, you've talked about uh, feeling like an, an immigrant, and given your experience of that, do you feel an affinity with Irish writers or people in exile? Does that come out through your work? Well, you know, it's something that I hadn't given much thought to, but, you know, my memory of the uh, uh, blatant hypocrisy of um, putting up notices to say Irish, uh, black, West Indian, or whatever, and, and dogs not welcome here. You see, it's all these notices. So, yes, I suppose that I felt um, some kind of uh, um, opening there that uh, made me feel less um, uh, uh, embattled, I don't know, it seems. As a leading artist of your generation, and you've been known and acclaimed for pictorial compositions like rediscovering different methods, the political sways in very heavily. Can you talk through the political notions of your work from New York, London and Ireland, and how they capture these emotions or these thoughts in the canvas? Well, uh, that's, that's a difficult one for me because um, I soon um, realised that um, even though the culture was um, uh, literary, that painting is not storytelling. You know, I mean, my first attempt was obviously the pressures of my life, you know, sort of um, awful sort of alarming things would happen and um, I'd be struck by this um, startling um, happening and uh, there was no picture. I then had to proceed to find a picture for this um, startling event, so, you know, like it's very striking, the moment of complete horror or the moment of extraordinary acts of the human condition. And in your work, you were talking about seeing a baby being born on a tenement floor through your own eyes. Can you explain how this affected your work so deeply? Yes, yes, yeah. I ran, of course, to the telephone box to, to get help. But, you know, and, I mean, this whole... Um, kind of um, startling moment, just um, uh, um, one is thunderstruck by the, you know, uh, the fact of it all, you know, the thingness of it. But there was no picture. So, um, for years I kept trying to make a picture of this um, uh, um, moment of um, utter um, confusion and, um, uh, you know, fear. I mean, I was afraid. In 88, you, you went to Maine, mm -hmm. and I wondered if you could tell me more about your new process of layering. That was a complete turn in your work. I mm -hmm. mean, that's a kind of revolutionary way of, of using the layering and the painting. So I wonder if you could Well, that's always been more. the best of painting, isn't it? You know, just layering the time. You know, you can uh, somehow uh, get a peep of what's underneath and you bring all your powers of um, uh, insights and the rest of it and feel, feel is top. And uh, you become 
uh, acquainted with what's inside and uh, uh, what's underneath, and uh, perhaps the, the, what's underneath uh, uh, that we all sort of uh, um, are nourished by is what attracts people to the work. Uh, you know, and I, I feel lucky in the sense that whereas subject matter was what was we were being taught about, that I felt all the way through that it was the the stuff that I was using paint on canvas, this kind of thing, color, and the rest of it. And um, uh, uh, my instinct towards the way um, one's um, gestures, you know, the natural the articulation of one's body uh, um, is satisfied by the rhythm in what you look at. Do you feel you're only getting the recognition that you deserve now? Do you feel you are underlooked um, before? Uh, I suppose that's one way of saying it, but you know, uh, all along, um, uh, until around 1966, um, I thought of myself and um, all the others as being for who was the best in Britain, right? So, you know, the Yorkshire people bought their thing, the Irish, and so on and so forth. I've always felt that I was a British artist. And, uh, you know, the hot tight um, tale of that was this kind of racist thing. I mean, I stopped being a British artist and became a black artist, you know, who happened to be British. And then, instead of being involved in the, the, the contemporary discussions about art and culture, um, and my work got pigeonholed, you know, pushed into this area whereby I couldn't do pop art, I had to do black art, you know, which was um, located in the um, stress and disputes of post-colonial, uh, um, current post-colonial troubles. And, uh, you know, uh, it was like being uh, in a straight jacket. Uh, but lucky for me, my work continued because I was dead keen on becoming um, uh, an ace painter and, you know, within the confines of uh, being British, uh, uh, to be reckoned with, right? I wanted to be up there with the best. I think everyone knew that. Do you feel being up there with the best is because of your techniques or maybe it's an overwhelming sense of the power of beauty Then you encounter one of your works, you're transformed into a kind of another realm? Do you feel maybe it's that kind of transcendental and emotive quality that kind of puts you within up there in the best in, in your the, own The words? kind of thing that happens without you knowing it, even though you're doing it yourself. Um, I think you're right there. I think that's very right. Uh, what worries me is that uh, the overwhelming emphasis is on uh, my racial disposition, the color of my skin, and that sort of thing. So I am constantly confused uh, when nice things happen, like your potential show and stuff, that is being done because I'm black. And uh, you see, I feel that without you having to say so, um, that this is being done because my work is good. And that the work is something that, that the people yourselves as uh, curators and, you know, the, the people who direct you to do this work feel that it's about the work and it's not the color of my skin or about uh, uh, my um, race. What does the notion of beauty mean to you as a painter? Um, I, you know, I keep saying to myself that I'm into beauty, uh, uh, but um, beauty is so awesome, so frightening. Um, that um, it is a goal uh, um, that one aspires to um, about the enormity of um, the pressures that that consists of uh, is intimidating. And I think a lot of people who want to be artists are intimidated by that fact. Um, it's only, you know, sort of people like myself who are, uh, you know, um, even so, I'll go and find out, you know, right? I'll go in, I'll go in and see what I make of it. 
So it's a kind of uh, aberration I think every human being has, but most of us don't want to go there.